Hey, what's up? This is Chris Cornthwaite. I founded RoosterVane.com. Today I want to talk about what I wish I'd known about consulting when I graduated. Okay, here we go. So these are eight things that I wish I'd known about consulting when I graduated with my advanced degree, which happened to be a PhD, but it doesn't matter if you got a master's degree, a PhD, whatever. So if you are in an advanced degree right now, if you're studying, if you're about to graduate, you are probably told by people all the time that you should go into consulting. And if you're like most people, you probably have no frigging clue what the heck consulting is. Hi there, I'm a consultant. Bro, no way! Me too! So that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. I want to give you eight things that I wish I'd known about consulting when I graduated. So let's talk right off the beginning. Before I get into these, let me just say um, there are kind of two ways that people talk about consulting. The first is where you go to work for a company. This could be like a McKinsey or a Deloitte or Bain. Um, and these companies will hire you to be a consultant and you're called a consultant, but you are actually um, working for them. So you're an employee with the job title of consultant. So the other way to think about consulting, which is what I'm going to talk about today, is where you are actually an entrepreneur. So this is where you're launching a business, you are finding your own clients, all that sort of thing. And that is another thing that we mean when we talk about consulting. And that's where I want to go today. So here's what I wish I'd known about consulting when I graduated. The first thing I wish I'd known about consulting is that it runs on networking. It really does. Um, there are so many areas of work that networking is vital. It's true for jobs, of course, and I talk a lot about getting jobs with networking. It's true for consulting as well. So if you have a really in-demand skill like accounting, for example, it might be a little less of a leap, but either way, no matter what you do, in my case, I did consulting on like project management and policy research. No matter what you do, you're gonna have to network. Networking becomes the thing that gets you clients. So this would mean having regular conversations with people in your industry. Um, it probably means reaching out to people on a regular basis. It might mean creating content on LinkedIn or something to get yourself visible. There are different ways that you can go about doing this, but there's not really any way to escape the fact that consulting really does revolve a lot around networking. So if you hate networking, don't go into consulting. It really will be essential to your ability to do business development. The second thing I wish that I'd known when I graduated is that you need to define what you offer. And I think a lot of graduates talk about things in terms of like grad school language or the language of the university. If you've spent a lot of time there, some of the people I work with are PhDs, they spent a lot of time in university. You need to speak the language of your employers to actually define what you offer. So for example, if you're great at relationships, you could be a consultant doing stakeholder relations, which is the word employees often use for managing the relationships with people who are important to them. If you are good at research, you might be consulting as like a research project manager um, or somebody who's gonna write a policy report or something. So whatever it is, you need to actually, and again, it comes from networking, um, but you need to network with, with people in the industry. You need to figure out what it is you actually offer to a potential um, to a potential consulting client and make that offer really clear. But the other thing I would say is start to start to kind of define what you offer, but don't forget that also you can be a little bit flexible. So once you start networking, you're going to find that people might say, well, we don't need X, but we do need Y. Can you do Y? And if it's something you can do and maybe would enjoy doing, it's not a bad idea sometimes to take those types of jobs, especially if they're going to kind of get your consulting practice started, get you some clients and uh, maybe help you kind of in the future, go more towards where you want to be. But that can be a great place to start. So do have a really clear sense at the beginning of one or two or three things that you would like to do and that you would like to offer and tell people that that's what you do, but also be open minded about defining your offer. OK, so number three, consider working a job first. The reason why I say this is that when I graduated, I if I wanted to consult after I graduated with my PhD in religious studies, I mean, I probably would have thought I'd be a good writer or editor or something. But the weird thing was after I'd worked a couple jobs and actually realized how the workplace works, I had way more to offer. I had already built my network a little bit. Um, and for example, I do some consulting now with um, with government. So if I want to consult with the government now, I've already worked for the government as an employee. I understand the language. I understand the structure. I understand how the work works. 
it's kind of funny, but I understand it. So it's way easier at that point to go back and work as a consultant or when you've worked in an industry, often you see even people who are retired go back and work as consultants because they know it. And it's one of the biggest hurdles to grads trying to jump into consulting roles is they don't actually know the industry that they're going into. So if your final goal in five or 10 years is to be a full-time consultant, why not go and work for a company first in that industry so you can actually learn it? all with the view of being a consultant eventually, but actually getting what I would call paid training. It's not a bad thing to get paid to actually learn your field. So go and work in the industry first, and then you can start to pivot to consulting. So with that comes more money, potentially. Consultants can make more money, um, and also more flexibility maybe. So you might be able to choose a little more of the work you wanna do and say no to more work that you don't wanna do, especially as you start to grow your reputation and your client base. Okay, so number four, if you are going to be this type of kind of freelance consultant, you need to learn some business basics. This is really critical. Um, and I don't think enough people realize this, that consulting is essentially running a business. And while you are working as a consultant, you are also going to have to be generating new business. You're gonna to have to be continuing your networking. You're gonna to have to be doing what we call business development. So it's important to understand, even if the thing you really love to do is doing research and you wanna be a research consultant, that there will be some business involved. So this is not an impossible task to learn a little bit about business, but you should do a little bit of reading. I'll place some links below to some resources you can start reading just about basic business structures and kind of start to understand how to actually run this thing. So you can actually learn this. I mean, if you have an advanced degree, it's not rocket science. You can learn how businesses work, but do take the time to learn it because you'll be thankful for it in the long run. Number five, you actually need to figure out how much to charge. So if you are going to be a consultant and try to survive on $20 an hour, I mean, it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. You'd be way better to go get a full-time job. So you should assume that if you're consulting, at first especially, as you build your practice, you're not gonna be working the same amount of hours that you would be working um, if you worked full-time in a company. So you're assuming less hours, um, and you're also, you need to assume that you are actually helping an employer because they don't have to hire a full-time employee to do the work that you wanna do. So even if they were hiring somebody at like a really basic starter package that started at, I don't know, 35 or $40,000 a year, chances are your consulting contract might be less than that even. So in a way you're saving employer money if you can do work that they really need done for less money. So it's important to recognize that in your pricing and don't price yourself too low. Maybe if you're starting and you wanna get a few jobs, do consider it, but it's really hard if you've started pricing at $30 an hour to um, then turn around and start charging 100 right away. So it's actually really important to go do some research in your industry, figure out where um, figure out where the hourly rates are. So for example, when I, when I graduated, the jobs that I started with were kind of between 35 and $40 an hour at first. Um, and then you should actually charge like either double or even some people would even say three times as much. You can choose exactly where you're comfortable and you have to find the range that fits but really don't, don't charge less than double, honestly. It's, it's really important because on top of doing the actual consulting work, which you might be able to kind of charge hourly for, um, or even if you're charging by the project, you're probably estimating based on like an hourly rate, you still need to do business development, you still need to do all, that other, all those other things that are required to keep your consulting business running. So don't let it be a race to the bottom. Make sure you charge respectable rates. Okay, so number six, build your personal brand. And one of the best places to do this that I know of is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a really fantastic place to grow your brand. And all that you really need to do is make your profile look great, show that you're offering some services, be really clear in your keywords and maybe even some of your experience. And you can start reaching out to people, connecting, um, even applying if you see people looking for consultants. That's really something really vital is to look professional. I love to have business cards as a consultant. You don't have to have these. I mean, more and more business cards are becoming obsolete, but it's still nice to hand somebody a piece of paper if you meet them. Um, I also have a website that is not very up to date right now, but it was my consulting website. Um, I'm not going to link to it because it's really ugly and terrible, but you can see if you can find it. Um, but websites go a really long way in making you look kind of legitimate. And I'll leave some links below to uh, some guides I've done on how to actually build a website. So whatever you decide to do, and you don't have to spend all your time building your brand. So do make sure that you build your brand, show people you are professional, you can solve their problems, which is really the reason people are hiring you anyways. Okay, so number seven, get professional help. I'm trying to be a little bit funny there. Professional help in this context means lawyer and accountant. 
Those are the two people you should absolutely have in your corner. The lawyer will come in really handy if you decide to incorporate a business. Um, you don't necessarily have to look at your guidelines for your area and what you want to do. So you have to figure that out. But a lawyer would help you incorporate. But even if you don't incorporate, lawyers can help you with things like consulting agreements. They can help you um, if you have like an NDA disclosure agreement you need to sign, figure out what that is. But you really need to have a lawyer in your corner. So the other person I have in my corner all the time is an accountant. It's super important to have somebody who actually understands the financial of your business. Um, I have used two programs to track my accounting. I've used FreshBooks, which I really love. I'll leave a link to below. FreshBooks is amazing. It's an amazing program for people who are just starting out in consulting and you can actually use it to send invoices. You can use it to track your clients, to track how much money you're making, all that sort of thing. And it's super easy to get up and running. Um, I also use QuickBooks and especially now with Roosterbane, I don't just do consulting. I sell products around the world. So I've switched to QuickBooks and also that's what my bookkeeper uses. So I have a bookkeeper. Um, at first, you probably don't need a bookkeeper. You probably just need a good accountant who once a year or maybe even at the beginning as you kind of set up your business will help you get the books in order um, and then we'll eventually at, at the end of every year help you with your taxes and things like that. So these two people, a lawyer and an accountant, I think are worth paying for. I really think they're worth their weight in gold. And to be honest, I have never wanted to use anybody that I know as a lawyer or accountant because I want to be able to fire them if I have to. So I would really suggest like if you're, you're running a business now, don't go and get like your uncle as your lawyer or your accountant. Find people who are actually professionals who are gonna help push your business forward and help you do better. Number eight, the final thing, get ready to do battle with yourself. Going into consulting is really, really hard work. And it's hard because when you have a job, you know, the paycheck comes in, you just get to do the work. And as long as you keep your head down and do the work, you'll do fine. Consulting, you can be working for a client doing amazing work, but when that, contract ends, you still have to turn around and get more work. So not only do you have to be working, but you also have to be generating business and trying to do a great job and trying to build your business and trying to be able to charge more and trying to get better. And there's a lot of things happening at once. So get ready to battle yourself because I've found it's really easy to get discouraged as a consultant. It's really scary to do the work you need to do to generate leads, the cold calling, um, even sitting with somebody face to face in a networking meeting and actually telling somebody, I am a consultant. I'm looking for work. Do you have any? It's really hard to say that, I find. I don't know. Maybe you're maybe you're more natural than I am at it. But it really does take a lot of work. So get ready to do battle with yourself all the time. Improve your mindset. Um, and that's going to help you perform a lot better as a consultant. So that's it. Those are just eight really simple thoughts about the things that I wish I'd known about consulting when I came out of grad school. I'd love to hear any thoughts you have about it. If you have any questions about consulting, feel free to reach out to me or leave them in the uh, leave them in the comments below. I'd really love to do more videos on consulting. So so let me know if you have questions because I can do more videos on it. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got lots more great content coming your way. Check out roosterbane.com, our main site. And I'll talk to you next time.